Good morning, and welcome to today's presentation on ZGC and garbage collection. My name is Paul Sue. Uh, I'm a software director at Oracle and manager of the Hotspot Garbage Collection team. Uh, so let's get started. So this session is primarily about ZGC, but before we get to that, let's take a look at the various collectors in Hotspot. If we look across the Java landscape, uh, we can see that there is tremendous diversity in, the, uh, in how and where Java is used and what's important for each application. Workloads may differ uh, in what they prioritize, maybe throughput or maybe latency, and they may vary in size and complexity by several orders of magnitude. So there are always trade-offs when optimizing for one or more of these performance aspects. So we need a variety of collectors in order to best serve all of these different Java applications. Here, we have a list of the Java collectors available in a hotspot that Oracle supports. We have the serial GC, which is a simple collector optimized for smaller memory footprint. It's useful, for instance, in embedded systems. We have parallel GC, which is a throughput-oriented collector. We have G1, which has been the default GC since JDK9. It tries to provide a balance uh, between throughput and latency for most applications. And we have ZGC, which focuses on providing low latency and scalability. So with four different collectors to choose from, how might you go about selecting the best one for your workload? Unfortunately, it's not as simple as looking at uh, the heap size or some other characteristics. The best way to find a good fit is to actually try the various GCs on your workload. For instance, you might start with G1 since it's the default and the most balanced among the collectors. And if you find that your application is taking too long to run, then perhaps you might want to try, try parallel. If on the other hand, you find that the latencies are significantly worse than you find tolerable, then you might try ZGC. You might also find that the performance results are almost, but not quite good enough in one or more areas. In that case, you may have to try tweaking some of the performance settings for the collector that you've selected. The garbage collect, uh, Hotspot Garbage Collection team maintains a GC tuning guide, uh, which is updated with each JDK release. In it, you can find advice on how to set the Java Virtual Machine settings to adjust various performance characteristics. The guide also contains in-depth explanation on how the GCs work, as well as useful definitions uh, of the terms that you may encounter when discussing garbage collection. For instance, regions, remembered sets, etc. So now, let's dig a little deeper specifically into ZGC. Let's start by taking a look at the development timeline uh, for ZGC thus far. Exploratory investigation into what would eventually become ZGC first began back in 2014. Four and a half years later, it was released as an experimental feature in JDK 11. And since then, there have been improvements and significant features added in uh, virtually every six month release of the JDK. Next, let's look at some of the guiding principles behind uh, the design and development of ZGC. ZGC uh, is designed to be scalable. So it can handle Java heaps from a few hundred megabytes all the way up to multiple terabytes. It also uh, focuses on providing low latency with GC pause times less than a, a millisecond. And it can deliver those pause times regardless of the heap size. So even on those multiple terabyte heaps. It tries to do this while maintaining good overall application performance, ideally within 15% of the through performance of G1 on, a, on the same workload. And finally, it is a fundamental design goal of ZGC to reduce the amount of tuning required to optimize performance. There are typically many tuning options available for each of the hotspot garbage collectors. ZGC tries to automate as many of these as possible uh, so that it will work well out of the box with uh, as many workloads as possible. So 
how does ZGC try to accomplish these goals? Perhaps the most important thing to know about ZGC is that it is a concurrent collector. That means that the garbage is collected while the uh, Java threads continue to execute. There's still GC pauses, but they execute in constant time. This is possible because all the GC work has been moved out of the pauses, so it doesn't matter how big the heap is or how large the live set is. It is parallel, so the work is split into multiple parts and run across many threads at the same time. It's compacting, which means that it moves objects around to fight fragmentation. Having concurrent compaction is one of the features that sets ZGC apart from G1. It's region-based, which means that the heap is split up into many smaller regions. And this allows ZGC to collect a subset of the heap, typically those regions that have the most garbage. It's pneumo-aware, which means when a Java thread allocates an object, that object will be placed in the memory that's local to the CPU that the thread is currently executing on. This gives the best memory latency when the, this object is later accessed. It's auto-tuned, which means it works well out of the box without complex configuration. And it uses load barriers and colored pointers as, as the two main techniques to achieve concurrency. More uh, details on these concepts can be found in the associated JEPs and other presentations that we've published on ZGC. So let's take a look at these concepts in, in practice by examining what constitutes a GC cycle in ZGC. In this diagram, the blue po arrows pointing down are the GC save points. These are synchronization points where a state switch occurs and are the only sources of GC pauses. We can say all the actual GC work happens in the concurrent phases, represented here by the horizontal arrows. Here, the application continues to run. Note that the work is divided among several threads executing at the same time, or in parallel. Some of the ex examples of the GC work we see here um, is the concurrent mark phase, where we walk, scan the roots and walk through the, object, uh, the entire object graph on the heap. And there's also the concurrent relocate phase, where we collect the heap regions that contain a lot of garbage. And finally, we see that since each of the synchronization points takes less than a millisecond to complete, ZGC is able to provide constant sub-millisecond pause times. So now that we know roughly how ZGC works, let's see how well it works by taking a look at some performance numbers. We have some results here from SpecJBB 2015, which is an industry standard Java benchmark. It produces two scores, max JOPS, uh, which is a throughput score represented by the darker bars, and critical JOPS, which is a lat latency measurement represented by the lighter bars. In this case, we're comparing the performance of ZGC and G1 on a 128 gigabyte heap. We can see that G1 has a slightly higher throughput score but that ZGC has a significantly better latency score. If we take a look at the, specifically at the GC pause times for this benchmark, we can really see the difference between G1 and ZGC. The scale of the vertical axis is in milliseconds. So we can see that G1 has an average pause time of about 150 milliseconds and a max pause time of around 450 milliseconds. And it appears uh, on the left that ZGC has no pause times at all. We actually have to zoom in by a factor of 1,000 in order to see the ZGC pause times. Here, we've changed the scale to microseconds. And we can see that the ZGC has an average pause time of about 30 microseconds and a max pause time of about 200 microseconds, which is well below the one millisecond pause time goal. Now let's take a look at performance tuning in ZGC. For all the other garbage collectors, this would have been a very busy slide. But for ZGC, there are really only two knobs to turn. One item that can be adjusted is the number of GC threads that ZGC uses to run uh, to handle the garbage collection work. But since JDK 17, ZGC will auto dynamically adjust the number of threads based on the needs of your workload. So the main tuning option remaining, and the only one we would normally recommend adjusting, 
is the maximum heap size. This needs to be large enough to accommodate all the live data uh, in, your, that, in your application with some amount of overhead to allow the collector to operate. ZGC is available on a wide variety of platforms, including all the ones that, uh, all of the Oracle supported platforms, such as Linux, Windows, and Mac OS for both x86 and ARM. And there's also support for both PowerPC and RISC-V. And as we showed earlier on the timeline, ZGC has been production ready for the past two and a half years since JDK 15. So please try it out on your workloads and see if it works for you. So now, as alluded to in the title, we get to what we've been spending the bulk of our time, uh, or bulk of our efforts on CGC lately, and that's support for generations in CGC. So, if ZGC works so well, why do we need to add support for generations? Well, there are workloads where ZGC with a single generation can't keep up. So let's take a look at that problem. In essence, garbage collection is a constant race between the application as it allocates new objects and the garbage collector as it tries to identify and reclaim all of the unused or dead objects. If the allocation rate is low, then the GC can keep up and everything is fine. However, if the allocation rate is high, then it takes longer for the GC to search through and process all of the objects. If the heap is filled before the GC uh, can reclaim sufficient memory, then everything comes to a standstill until the GC can catch up. And this is called an allocation stall. You can give the VM extra buffer space to ward off potential allocation stalls by increasing the amount of heap memory. But this isn't the most effective or efficient way of handling these situations. One other approach is to take advantage of something called the weak generational hypothesis. And this hypothesis states that it's very common for most job applications that most objects are short-lived. They're allocated, used, and then discarded in a relatively short period of time. We can take advantage of this behavior by dividing the heap into two logical regions, usually referred to as the young generation and the old generation. When a new object is allocated, it will be placed in the young generation. If the object remains reachable or live after a set number of young collections, then the GC will eventually move or promote that to the old generation. Now when the young generation becomes full, there will be relatively few objects still alive within that generation. Traversing the object graph will be relatively inexpensive, and since most of the remaining objects will be unreachable, and thus garbage, there will be a lot of memory to reclaim. Therefore, focusing collections on young generations leads to increased efficiency, which in turn leads to the ability to handle higher allocation rates, to operating with lower heap overhead, and less CPU cycles spent in handling garbage collections. So now let's have a look at some of the actual results from applying this theory to ZGC. Here we have a run with the Cassandra 4 benchmark. The test here is to find the allocation rate where ZGC can execute with, uh, without running into allocation stalls. And then applying the same allocation rate to generational ZGC, lower the amount of heap until we begin to see allocation stalls. What we see here is that we, have to reduce, we can reduce the size of the heap to approximately 25% of what the original ZGC algorithm needed to run and still run just as well. Now we can flip this test around and by configuring the request rate, we can see how many requests we can sustain at a set heap size before we see an allocation stall. And as we can see here with generational ZGC, we can handle a request weight four times higher than ZGC before hitting an allocation stall. So to sum things up, with generational ZGC, it's possible to achieve four times the throughput uh, use 25% of the memory compared to ZGC as it is now. And it can do this while still maintaining the same sub-millisecond GC pause times. The addition of the concepts of generation 
dramatically increases the complexity of ZGC, uh, which potentially adds many more tuning points. However, a good deal of thought has been put into upholding the ZGC goal of minimizing uh, tuning requirements. Normally with generational collectors, one tuning point is the size of the generations. However, ZGC uses various heuristics to automatically size a young generation. So there's no need to set this at all. The tenure threshold is a number of young collections that an object needs to experience before it's promoted to the old generation. ZGC handles this dynamically at runtime to best fit the current workload. So once again, there's no need to set this at all. The initiating heap occupancy tells the GC when to start collecting the old generation. It's really tricky to set this to a good value before running the application. So during runtime, ZGC is able to determine the opportunity cost of this, doing this. So once again, we don't need to set this. And we saw in ZGC, that ZGC already dynamically adjusts the number of GC threads. This has been further improved in generational ZGC so that it can re react much quicker to s sudden changes in the application behavior. So once again, we're left with the maximum heap size as the main value to set for tuning generational ZGC. If you're interested in learning more, Let's take a look at where you can find more information about ZGC and the hotspot garbage collectors. With regards to ZGC, the best place to start would be the ZGC project page on the OpenJDK wiki. Here you'll find helpful tips on how to get started with ZGC, as well as links to the project repo, mailing lists, informational blog posts, and other ZGC-related uh, presentations. If you're specifically interested in following the progress of generational ZGC, you can follow along with JEP 439. The JEP, JEP itself contains a lot more information on the motivations and goals behind generational ZGC, as well as many of the technical details and design choices that went into the feature. Early access binaries for generational ZGC are available for everyone to download and to try out. As we covered earlier, Java workloads come in all shapes and sizes. And one of the most difficult parts about developing features for the Java virtual machine is making sure that it performs well for all the workloads out there. If you have a workload that you think may be well suited for ZGC and you would like to make sure it performs well, then please consider trying out the EA uh, binaries and providing feedback as soon as possible. If you're not interested not only in ZGC, but the other hotspot collectors as well, a good resource is the Inside Java site maintained by Java's developer relations team. Here you can find a large number of related blog articles and uh, presentations aggregated in one place. All the content is tagged, so you can easily find the items related to what you're interested in. Currently, there are about 58 items related to gar garbage collection. This is a good place to find articles authored by Hotspot GC team members, which include summaries of the new GC features introduced in each JDK version, roadmap information on what we were working on for the future, and technical deep dives into certain features we think may be interesting to the community. So that concludes our presentation for today. 